55 napot töltött az űrben Marsha Ivins, aki két évvel ezelőtt vonult úgymond nyugdíjba a NASA-tól. Marsha, let's start with a date. Uh, the 5th of May 1961. Did it change your life completely? This day. Well, I was just 10 years old and I'm guessing that's the day that Alan Shepard uh, made the first flight in yes. the first Mercury rocket and yeah, it probably did change my life because yeah. at that point I decided I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, how does someone become an astronaut? Well, when I was 10 years old I wasn't quite sure how you become an astronaut. Astronauts were men, they were fighter pilots two things that I couldn't be at the moment, um, but they were engineers. So I thought, well, I'll go be an engineer. That, but that's uh, um, a man's vocation, a man's profession, isn't it? Uh, it? There were many things that were men's profession. I I started to fly airplanes when I was 15 years old. I flew an airplane before I drove a car. Most people would have said in the 60s that flying was a man's profession. Um, I didn't think of it as a man's profession or a woman's profession, it's just some profession that I'd like. So I figured at some point women will have to be part of the space program. Why not now? You drive a couple of different uh, airplanes, aircrafts. Um, have you got a favorite one? The airplane that I have been flying um, privately for myself for the past, oh, I don't know, 30 five years is a Stearman. It is a round engine, open cockpit biplane built in 1946. And uh, have you ever compared it to a car? Driving a car and flying a plane? No, they're different. Absolutely yeah, different. Yeah, they're different. Which one do you like uh, more? I Which would prefer, prefer to fly an airplane, actually. There's less traffic. Um, <laughs> it's easier to go from one point to the other. I don't get lost quite as often flying as I do driving. I see. <coughs> well, uh, you spend 55, day, 55 days in space. Um, is it a journey? Is it a job? Or is it a holiday being up there? Uh, all three, actually. It is. It was my job. I was a career astronaut. I was a uh, U.S. civil servant working for the government because NASA jobs were government jobs. Um, so it was my job to go to space. Who, who gets to say that? It was my job to go to space. They paid me to go to space. It was a job I loved. So I was very fortunate to be able to say I had a job that I loved. Uh, it was a holiday in a lot of ways. It was hard work and hard training. Um, a lot of time spent getting ready to do it. but. I was off the earth. I was away from all of the daily things every day on earth. How did you feel when you when you looked back and you and you saw the planet from up there? Is it really different as they say? So it, it isn't different. It's not that you see the planet because we're not that far off of the planet. You see the way I describe it is if you took a large globe and you held it at arm's length and you looked across it that's sort of the Earth you see. So much higher than an airplane, but not like you see in science fiction movies, or mm. not like you could see, for example, if you were at the moon. But you still can't see the boundaries. You cannot see the boundaries. You see browns and greens and blues and white of clouds, but you don't see, you see rivers, but you don't see really natural borders that separate mm. countries. Mm -hmm. Does it somehow uh, change someone's thoughts? about life uh, and about everyday matters? It made me sad in a way. I was, I was floating in the window one day and we go around the earth in 90 minutes. So, you know, very quickly you're from one continent, you know, and you're to the next. And, and we floated over in the daylight, the Saudi Arabian Peninsula and that area in around Egypt and Jerusalem and Jordan and, you know, that whole area. And I thought, People have been killing each other for millennia over this piece of land, and there it went, out the window. And it, it just makes me sad, because if everybody, I think, could see the Earth as they go around it, I think it might 
be a little simpler to live where you live. How does it feel like being in zero G? That's a hard question to answer because there's nothing on earth you can compare it to. Mm -hmm. So there is no practice, absolutely. There's no practice. You can fly in an airplane that gives you about 30 seconds of being weightless. It flies a, a parabolic trajectory so that when you float over the top, you float for 30 seconds, but then as you come down in the bottom and the airplane pulls out, you're pressed down with twice your weight, and then you float for 30 seconds, and then you're pressed down. So you get this up and down kind of thing that you don't get when you are weightless. So it's something we have experienced seconds of that you just learn to deal with when you are now faced with days and weeks of it. Mm. Would you like to go back? Oh, absolutely. I think every astronaut who's ever flown has said, yes, I would love to go back. Uh, would you live in space? I would live in space. What do you think, when uh, will this time come? When not in my lifetime. <laughs> um, maybe not in your lifetime. Um, I don't know. We haven't really progressed in technology in the past 50 years mm. of flying this, which is not true in any other technological field. But in spaceflight, it's true. We have better electronics, we have better materials, but we actually don't have better rocket technology. So until we can develop that, I think living in space and going farther in space is, is out there in the future. Mm -hmm. Which was your most uh, memorable flight out of, out of the five? Well, they're all memorable. The first is always the most memorable because it's the first, but the last was a f construction flight for the International Space Station. And it was our job to add the U.S. laboratory module called Destiny. And it was my job as the robot arm operator to do that. So that was probably the hardest thing that I ever did. Mm -hmm. Do you go um, and, and uh, talk about your, uh, your past being an astronaut? To, do you go to schools to uh, tell children how to become an astronaut, how to choose a profession, which profession to choose and why? I do not. Um, I rarely talk about my particular life unless asked, and uh, there's no way I can tell anybody how to do mm -hmm. anything. I tell, I hope, the story of human spaceflight, what we have done um, as people going to space. I try to answer the questions that people normally ask. How do you eat? How do you sleep? How do you do other things without gravity? Um, I show pictures that we have taken of the Earth from space, not satellites, from astronauts. And I, I offer some thought about where I think, mm -hmm. personally, we might go in the future. But I, I don't, I, there's no way I can tell anybody, mm -hmm. here's what to do, and then you can be an but astronaut. But it's still unique. To, to be an astronaut, a female astronaut. There have been something, 50, 52 there astronauts. There have been 55, 55 female astronauts in mm -hmm. the world, 44 in the United States, and that's out of, I think, 525 total. So still, uh, being an engineer as a woman is also a unique job, isn't it? It was when I did it. I think today you have a much higher percentage of women who are in um, fields typically thought of as a man's field. But when I did it, it was pretty rare. Today, I don't think it's quite as rare. Mm -hmm. So I, I heard the message that was your message, which said, uh, uh, pick a field that you're going to be happy in, that you will enjoy working in, whether it's space or medicine or any source of science field. And if it's predominantly a man's field, just don't think about it. So you don't think about it? I don't think about it. I don't. I think if I, if I treat myself like, a, like an equal, like you are a doctor, I am a doctor. You are an engineer, I am an engineer. We are working on this problem together. If I treat myself that way, you will treat, my, treat me that way. As opposed to saying, I'm a woman, you know, I can do this. Or if you said, I'm a man, you know, I can do this. Then we see each other slightly differently. So I don't think I ever treated myself any differently than I hoped to be treated by somebody else. Uh, we say a message to, to these children you're going to meet today. I guess if I had to give a message, it would be 
don't give up on what you're doing. If you don't succeed the first time, try it again. I mean, there's it may be the luck of the draw in many cases for what you do. It may be more experience required. It may be more maturity required. It may be a different set of skills that are needed at the time. Whatever it is you want to do, keep trying. Thank you. I hope your mission is going to be their mission too. Thank you. Thank you for coming.